Well, today we're going to be talking about Switch 2, but first, ha <laughs> ha, happy Halloween. Look, we do have some new rumors about Nintendo Switch 2, specifically around when the system is coming out. So, look, we've been talking a lot about the reveal, but it's been a bit since we talked about when it's coming out. And we do have a new rumor around that coming from a possibly reputable place. We'll talk about that, but look, we can't ignore some of the big things that are hanging out there. Nintendo had some massive announcements this week, so unfortunately, I didn't get any uh, videos out on these, and I was going to do individual videos, but, you know, things don't always work out the way you want. I was dealing with uh, loan people and <laughs> trying to get a car for a couple days. Kind of a pain in the ass. Good news is we did get approved for the car loan and everything's good, but it just took a while. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this because, oh boy, is this some pretty exciting stuff. Uh, and the first thing we have to talk about, of course, is Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition. That's right. Finally, the Wii U Classic is coming to Nintendo Switch. Nintendo dropped this a couple days ago over on X and YouTube and all the social medias. It's releasing on March 20th. It features improved visual fidelity and a few new story elements which you know someone who beat x i kind of appreciate the new story elements because it might make the story a bit more full and make a bit more sense in the end uh but who really knows i'm probably not going to end up replaying it but for people out there that have never played xenobate chronicles x which i can't blame you it was a wii u game uh you definitely should pick this up you do not need to play any prior xenoblade games in fact I kind of think if you're new to the franchise, this is the game you should start with and then get into Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Just my opinion, but that's really cool. Another really cool thing Nintendo did is launch this new app. Again, they announced this yesterday. We've been having like this Twitter Direct. There could be another announcement today on Halloween. Who the hell knows? Uh, but they announced Nintendo Music, a new feature for Nintendo Switch Online subscribers. It's a very interesting application. It's for your phones. Unfortunately, you can't use it on anything else you can't use it on your switch you can't download like local applications to your computers or anything unless you're emulating the apple shop or you're emulating like a phone or something android that being said uh the music app's really cool it's got 27 nintendo games in it nintendo does plan to update this over time it does require a basic nintendo switch online subscription so not an expansion pack version so that's kind of neat that it's actually pretty cheap to access per year and yes it features a lot of really cool stuff i know i've been listening to zora's domain from breath of the wild to help me sleep and everything so that's been really neat to get that play and i just bluetooth it into my alexa and, and just have a good time that being said it's been a really great experience and they it's not perfect i want to be clear uh one thing is like they don't have the composers listed with each song i feel like that's a misstep by nintendo something they could add over time nintendo did say they plan to update this application a lot moving ahead this application is going to be around for years new music and new games getting added new features new playlists uh, it has this cool little extension feature on some songs where you can extend it to like 15 minutes 30 minutes or an hour and that's not the same as playing the song on repeat which you can also do so i find that really cool it's not available for all the songs but it is available for a lot of them it's almost like you're getting like a new version of the song uh, so I, I really like that idea I think Nintendo's done a really great job with this application overall a few things to fix up obviously we just need more games added in would be cool if we get third-party games in there someday but there's so much Nintendo IP we just need a lot more Nintendo games put on this application and besides that yeah um maybe some composer credits would be kind of cool i think that the composers of the music would actually really appreciate that and again that is something nintendo could add over time i want to be a bit fair to them the app is really slick it works really well uh it is definitely something that has had really nice development time put into it there's just some things we'd like to see improved in the future and hopefully we see that over time but shout out to nintendo for finally maybe 10 years too late giving us a music app by the way, I hope this is just a baby step to get stuff on Spotify and iTunes and everywhere else. But even if Nintendo just sells albums on there, uh, that would be fine with me. That's why I hope that this is just like a baby step. It could be like, hey, if you don't want to buy all our individual albums on those places, go over here and, you know, you know, get, just, just use our app and, and subscribe to us or buy our albums. So I really hope that Nintendo is considering that. And this is just a baby step to get in their music on more places. That being said, uh, now we got to dive into the actual rumor mill baby for Nintendo Switch 2. But before we do, I want to remind you that, hey, if you're enjoying the video so far and you want to stay up to date on all things Nintendo, heck, I even just went over two things I meant to make videos on, but I had real life get in the way. Hey, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel uh, because you're going to want to be here for all the Switch 2 coverage. One once it's revealed, once we have the games, all the game coverage, the Mario coverage, you're going to want to be right here at Nintendo Prime. So 
You guys remember a while ago, we went over a report from Vandal. They did a podcast with this person who is the CEO of a certain accessory maker. Uh, and I find this to be an important thing to note because while this person actually legitimately is the CEO of that company, you could actually look it up yourself. It's interesting what accessory makers seem to know about Nintendo Switch 2. It seems like they've been briefed. It seems like they have manufacturing uh, partners that are telling them things. So we don't know if any of the stuff they have to say is true. None of this stuff has been verified yet. We've had, you know, other manufacturing partners come out and say things. But Nintendo hasn't revealed the system yet, right? So why are we talking about it again? Well, not only are we going to recap what was said last time, there's a new interview with him at, over at Vandal with this particular CEO that gave us something that I think we all are interested in, and that is release timing for Nintendo Switch 2. So let's go ahead and read this article a bit here. We're getting a summary from over at Go Nintendo. So here's what the original uh, interview said. Uh, the Switch successor is complete. Uh, Mercado, who this is Roberto Mercado, he's the CEO, uh, has had access to a near final version of the hardware. So he got to go hands on with it at one point. The Switch successor will launch sometime around March or April. This is what he was saying last time around, which is about two months ago. Uh, the Switch successor uses magnetic Joy-Con with a locking system to keep them secure. We've kind of had that somewhat confirmed via shipping data information. Uh, the Joy-Con thumbsticks will be considerably different from the current design. We'll get into that in a moment because we have an update on that. Uh, Nintendo will do simultaneous worldwide launch of the Switch successor, so they're not going to, like, you know, stagger launch it. And the price could be somewhere between 400 and 500 euro. Now, that was last time. Here's the updated information. Uh, so the exact same outlet and source mentioned above are back at it again with more Switch successor rumors. And here's the tidbits that were shared this time. Not as many, but really important ones. The system will use analog joysticks. So uh, for anyone speculating on different types like hall sensing and all this stuff, it seems to be going with a more traditional joystick uh, setup. Hopefully they're taller. Hopefully there's not as much drift issues. Hopefully that's what they mean. But of course, you know, is there some special feature with those joysticks? That's not described here. Uh, it will be slightly larger than the Switch OLED, which a lot of us have done the measurements. It, it only needs to be like a, you know, a very, very little bit bigger than the Switch OLED in terms of size to fit an eight inch screen on it. It depends on the bezel size really, right? And then it's expected to launch at the end of March. So last time he was talking about, oh, it'll launch in March or April. This time he's saying, no, actually we expect it to launch in March. April is no longer mentioned. Uh, that would seem to be that there's some updated information out there that Nintendo plans to be launching this thing at the end of March. And I think this is really fascinating if we consider Nintendo, we know factually, is launching Xenoblade Chronicle X on March 20th. Now, I want to be clear. Nintendo is going to keep releasing games for Switch before and after Switch 2 comes out. I want to just be very clear about that. Regardless of what's happening with Switch 2, games will still come to Switch. It is Nintendo's lead platform. It has a huge consumer base, and games are being bought in the millions. So while we might not get any more brand new games from Nintendo on the system, ports, remasters, we're going to keep getting much of this, that stuff. We're still going to get some indie games and third-party games. The platform's going to be pretty well supported in 2025. In fact, we already know about two major games in Legends ZA and Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. So yeah, the platform's going to continue to be supported. It would would feel a little weird if they launched that on March 20th and then it's like March 25th, <laughs> March 28th, and then they launch Switch 2. Theoretically, still possible. It's also possible that Switch 2 could actually help the sales of Xenoblade Chronicles X via backwards compatibility. I can see a lot of people that pick it up day one. They maybe want, the, you know, maybe want Xenoblade Chronicles X backwards compatible, especially if there's any sort of performance boost. That's something that we haven't talked about a lot. But if there is at least a frame rate jump going between hardware for any game that has an unlocked frame rate, it just runs better on Switch 2. Uh, that could actually be a reason to want to launch this game around the time Switch 2 comes out to make it not a launch game but still something new for switch owners that aren't getting Switch 2 while also if you are getting Switch 2 you could also get this game and get a little bit better performance so I do want to note that I it is a little weird if it is late March considering the Xenoblade Chronicles X stuff but also is it that weird because if you own a Switch and you're not buying Switch 2 day one you need something you need something to play and Xenoblade Chronicles X is that something so uh i honestly think like there could be some validity to this stuff uh we're not gonna know for a while we're not gonna know till nintendo announces it and that's where i want to get into 
the whole announcement stuff. Team 2024 seems to be taking a lot of L's. Uh, at this point, it does appear Nintendo will not be revealing Switch 2 this week. This was another week that a lot of us considered as a possibility with the upcoming investors meeting on Tuesday. But I'm going to tell you right now why I'm not off Team 2024 and when I will be off. I will be off after the investors meeting next week. And that's because Furukawa is a different president at Nintendo. And you might go, no, Nintendo's pretty traditional. Sure, except for Furukawa. And I want to tell you why. We all talk about how he said the Nintendo Switch successor would have an announcement by the end of this fiscal year. His words, right? He's the reason that we're hyped for a reveal. We could talk about the rumors, talk about the leaks. Furukawa is to blame. Furukawa is the one that gave us a countdown timer for a reveal. So speculation is going to keep happening for a reveal because until Furukawa just tells us or they just reveal the damn thing. But he also told us something else way back when in May alongside that announcement of the Switch successor that we often forget. He told us a month ahead of time there would be a Nintendo Direct in June. That is the first time Nintendo had ever told us about a Nintendo Direct that far out. We have never had a month warning on a Nintendo Direct. We didn't need rumors or speculation or expectations of a June Direct because he just told us there would be one. So why am I saying this? Well, all of that came on the heels of an investor's meeting. So with an upcoming investor's meeting that also involves an investor's Q&A, it is possible that while Switch 2 may not be revealed or at this point likely won't be revealed before the investor's meeting, he could drop news in a tweet or during the investors meeting about when they plan to reveal the system. If he says we will be we will have new information on the Nintendo Switch successor in January 2025, bam, that's big news. If he says, "Hey, we're going to reveal the Nintendo Switch successor next week," bam, that's big news. Bottom line is he set the expectations. He put out there when the next Nintendo Direct would be at the time. So we can't put it past Furukawa to do it again. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm not giving up on 2024 because we don't know what Furukawa is going to do. He could literally say, we'll be revealing it this week or we're revealing it next week or we're revealing it in January or February. He could give us a much more information or even exact timing at the investors meeting. So I'm not giving up on Team 2024 till after then because I do think there is a chance, it might be a small one, but Furukawa set the expectation that there's a chance that he could be very forward, stop all the rumors, stop all the speculation, and just tell us when it's happening. And then we can all get hyped and excited for that. That's what I want to do. So maybe it's some hopium that he does that, but I do think when he did it with a direct and then he also did it with telling us it would be announced this fiscal year, Furukawa was just different. He's not Iwata. He's not Takahashi. He is a very different president. And he seems to be much more transparent with the investors and also with the consumers. So, you know, he knows the clock is ticking. He knows about all the rumors and reports. He can squash it all and just tell us. And I think he might. So next Tuesday, going to be a pretty hype day to pay attention. And we'll also say this. If he doesn't tell us a date or tell us a time frame, and he instead, when all the Switch 2 questions coming from the investors, he's very coy, he's very avoiding, he's uh, talking around it rather than talking about it, I think that's a very, very good indicator that it's over for Team 2024, and this thing's being revealed in 2025. Because then he doesn't really have to say anything until the next investors meeting, right? Right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am the Tender Robo Dance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch all of you guys in the next video.